a desktop application may need to host a website and have two-way communication with it this is gonna dem this video is going to demonstrate how to do that the desktop app is an MFC C++ desktop app created using uh, Visual Studio 2019 and the website that it wants to host is this I've written some HTML very simple it's got a button element paragraph element and a form element forms got two fields um, as well as some JavaScript to maintain the state of the page and some helper functions to get text and set text associated with the elements um, the onload in the JavaScript what that does is set up the button click event handler to our button click and it maintains this boolean to say how well how successful the page load has been um, the successful page load boolean can be retrieved from this call get page loaded uh, each page also has a unique ID um, which we'll speak about later uh, that can be retrieved using get page ID and you can set it using set page ID um, <clears throat> the button event the button click event handler that we spoke about previous what that does is use external to make a call called interrupt message that has got two arguments two parameters uh, the name of the message and the page ID so in this case it's interrupt message being called and the message is called button click and the page ID will have been set up by the um, desktop app um, who's hosting the web page um, previously via a call to set page ID the rest of the JavaScript really is just functions to get and set the text associated with these elements so we have a desktop app we have a website that we want to host in it how do we do that well I've written um, uh, an MFC class that is basically just a wrapper for the OLA control I web browser too all it does is extend the class by adding um, access to the JavaScript um, and allow the user to make calls into the JavaScript so how does that happen we can get the JavaScript by using the site and calling get document on that and we can then query the return for HTML document which we can then call get script on and that's going to return us in the desktop app the JavaScript that we spoke about previously so we've got the JavaScript now we can make a call to it we set up some um, arguments and the name of the member that we want to call and we make the call via the invoke on the script we get a variant return value and we return true or false to say whether the um, JavaScript call was made successfully or not and then if it was made successfully the caller could then have a look at the variant to see what was actually returned via the JavaScript so we now have a desktop app a, a, a website and a OLA control web browser that will allow us to navigate to it and make calls to JavaScript in it and we could have a look at that now see what that shows us and here it is so here's a desktop app here's the view and the view has got an instance of that Olay control web browser uh, it's navigated to the HTML that we've seen and um, obviously things look okay so let's have a look at the view <coughs> So the view has got an instance of the browser. It's got effectively a mirror of that Boolean in the HTML that tells us how successful or not the load was. And it's got the unique ID. Um, we will give this unique ID to our browser when the HTML has been loaded successfully. So let's have a look at the creation this is the view class we um, 
In our onCreate for the view, we create an instance of the web browser. We, the end, we then create the window associated with it. And we then use this iDispatch interface, which we'll speak about later. That is to do with the Olay um, communication mechanism. Um, we'll speak about that later. Effectively, what we're doing is we're creating the browser and associated window resources. We are telling the browser, uh, we are telling our iDispatch that we are interested, that's this view, is interested in interrupt message calls. Uh, we then navigate to the um, HTML. Uh, we do that by, uh, I have a build event that puts the HTML from, copies the HTML from the project folder into the binaries folder. Um, given that fact, we can get the executable path, split it up and add the name of the HTML and use that to navigate the browser. After we've done that, we set up a timer and all the timer does is keep repeatedly calling the HTMLs get page loaded so when things are successful <clears throat> and we can do that because we've seen previously we can call the JavaScript in our browser so we repeatedly say is everything okay and when yes everything is okay we stop the time stop the timer set up our boolean to be true and we call set page ID which we spoke about previously that makes this page unique um, when it's communicating, the page will pass that um, ID and um, it will then be used to query whether or not um, a call is for any particular registered observer or if the call's not for us yet. Um, invoke is something that we'll speak about later. So to summarise, at the moment we have uh, a desktop app, C++ MFC, we have a website and we have that website created and hosted in the view uh, and when everything's okay the view gives it its unique ID but uh, we need a communication from the website to the desktop app so <clears throat> how does that work well that's all part and parcel of setting up the um, Olay classes, deriving some Olay classes and wiring your classes into the framework. We do that in the app. So our HTML makes a call to external interrupt message. Um, so we need to wire in interrupt message from the desktop app to be the target of this call. We do that by implementing iDispatch. iDispatches in Vogue will be called as an endpoint to this call. So we've created an instance of our iDispatch implementation and to, um, to wire that into the framework, we have to derive a Olay Control Manager. This is a simple class that we'll have a look at now. And what this will do is it's derived from the MFC base class and it will when it gets a call to create a site for uh, an Olay control <clears throat> it has a look at the control sees that it's the web browser and this gives us a chance to return a site other than the base MFC site um, because we need to do that because we've derived our own site um, which we create and return here. So our own site gives us the chance to handle get external. So the external call there will be wired into our dispatch. When we return our dispatch, this is the site, when the site returns our iDispatch implementation from its get external member so in the app now just to reiterate we've created our iDispatch 
which hopefully will be the end point to the JavaScript's external call. We then create a control manager, which will in turn create our control site and our control site will return this iDispatch implementation via its get external and all that um, can be wired into the framework via <coughs> AFX enable control container which effectively just uses our derived container manager pointer in its uh, MFC maintained state so that could sound a little bit convoluted and um, uh, difficult to understand but it's quite simple really um, the HTML makes a call to external uh, makes a call to interrupt message via external we want that call to be um, wired into our iDispatchers invoke to do that we need to return our iDispatch when external is get external is called on the site <coughs> and to do that the manager has to create our site when it knows that a web browser is being um, created and that is that so let's have a look at the um, the iDispatch itself so the iDispatch the idea behind it is there are members um, functions um, that have got names and arguments that have got names um, and we maintain uh, a vector of these members for instance we create our one and only that we're interested in called interrupt message <coughs> just to reiterate again the on click for the button will make a call via external to interrupt message with two parameters the name of the message and the page ID so this is that this is that member it is interrupt message message name page ID and we create that and store that in our vector what that then gives us the ability to do is to have um, observers or targets register themselves to be interested parties <coughs> of member members that are being called via the invoke the interrupt uh, sorry the i dispatch has some olay uh, maintenance some admin with ref counting to do there as well and it uh, as you can see when we create a member along with its um, arguments we associate an id with them and um, when <coughs> interrupt message will be called via external the IDs of the member will be um, will be required so you'll be given the name so in this case our I dispatch will be given the name of interrupt message and we can then say okay given that name um, let's get the IDs associated with it these should be unique and um, persist throughout the lifetime of the desktop app <coughs> and then um, our invoke will effectively then be called which we could find the member given the ID remember we previously would have been asked for the ID and we're now being given it back so the ID would be called sorry the ID would be passed which we could then use to find a member um, and remember the idea of creating these members like this one is that we can also associate observers or targets that are interested in those um, members when they're being called via the um, external in the JavaScript <coughs> so we've got the member everything looks great we've found it so these are the targets um, and as we've seen previously in the view when the view created the instance of the browser it 
got the eye dispatch, which I initially said we'll speak about later, but we're speaking about now. So it gets the eye dispatch and it pushes it as a registered observer, an interested party um, or target or whatever we want to call it, <clears throat> when interrupt message will be called. So that takes us back to here in the eye dispatch we will have an interested target and it will be a view and so the views invoke will be called now invoke all that is is a, a pure virtual on this simple target class we could have a look at the declaration of the view and see that the view is derived from one of these targets so it will have to override invoke which it does there so inside the view <coughs> we can now have a look at invoke because we know what it's for so effectively uh, the HTML has had a button click event the button click event is handled in the JavaScript interrupt messages called via external our i dispatch implementation has been wired into the olay framework so interrupt message will be passed to invoke of the i dispatch the i dispatch looks for anybody that's interested in um, uh, interrupt message the view will be one of them and we end up here <clears throat> um, so the view has a look at the arguments does the number seem right does the ID of the page that it's come from seem right if everything does seem right we have a look at the name of the message the interrupt message and that is button click if everything went well with loading the HTML page we could then we know we can, we can make um, calls into the JavaScript and we know that there are um, JavaScript members that will allow us to get the text associated with the HTML elements. So we make those calls and we instantiate this uh, simple dialogue that I've written. So let's have a look at the end result. <coughs> so here we have, again, our desktop app, our view, which is hosting a web browser the web browser has been given a unique ID and we've queried the web browser to see how successful the page load was and now what's going to happen is the HTML is going to get a button click the button click handler is in the JavaScript it's going to make a call to interrupt message via the external it's going to pass a couple of parameters um, one of the interested observers of interrupt message will be this view because we registered ourselves in the creation process which is here we registered ourselves as interested in interrupt message so the i dispatches the i dispatch will know that there is at least one target that's interested and it's the view that will then get called we then make calls into the HTML page to get the text associated with the elements and that results in us being able to populate this dialogue. For instance, we can see that button and so on, form, fields, everything's correct. We could also alter the text. So now we press OK and what happened there is we sent the new text from the dialog to um, the HTML page via the JavaScript calls that allow us to change the text associated with elements. So now we have full interoperability between our desktop app. It knows how to make calls into the JavaScript and alter the uh, 
the HTML page and the HTML page knows how to via external make interrupt message calls and pass the message name and the page ID um, and the Olay framework knows that our I dispatch has been wired correctly into that external call via our derived Olay um, control site and the Olay control site was created via our derived Olay control container manager <clears throat> a little bit convoluted but once you understand what's going on it's all pretty straightforward so we now have complete interoperability um, and this website itself is not that interesting but uh, in the past I have been asked to host and uh, drive um, a Google Maps instance from within a desktop app so that's more involved um, but it's the same principles you could tell the Google Maps instant instance from the desktop app for instance to place new pins in various places um, and you could get communication from the Google Map to the desktop app telling you that a pin has been moved or a zoom level has been changed and so on um, this project um, I've put on GitHub so people can have a look at it and investigate the uh, interoperability example in their own time.